Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter is practical process control. World class process control. Not just using a control chart by the way. The control chart just tells you the status of your process. What I'm talking about is how to practically get a process in control whether you're using charting techniques or not. So we are talking about, for me, we are talking world-class process control. And for me, it's on a practical level, practically. How do companies get their processes under control? How do world-class companies do this in a real sense so that it just works every time, all the time? Well, okay, folks, let's look at this. Think about this. Every process you have, every money-making process you have looks the same. Is your money-making machine it's making something, it's providing a service to the customers. Could be hitting a dimension, could be hitting a cost, could be hitting some kind of performance criteria. What we want to do, of course, is guarantee that we're going to do those kinds of things. Over on this side, so here are the outputs. Of course, over on this side of the diagram, well, we have lots and lots of inputs. You know, inputs over this side of the diagram. And what does world class process control look like? Well, it's very straightforward. The variables over this side, some of them could be settings. I'll put a couple in time or speed. Temperature, pressure, so they could be settings, they could be policies and procedures. So let's have a look. The hydraulic maintenance. Okay, we've got some hydraulic systems. How do we do the maintenance on the hydraulic power pack? Okay, so it could be a policy and a procedure. It could be a policy and procedure like What type, of, what type of training do you do? It could be a policy and procedure, of course. What type of material do you purchase? And it could be a policy and procedure about tools, tooling. What type of grinding wheel do you buy? What type of cutting tools do you buy? Do you buy the expensive ones? Do you buy the cheap ones? So some of these are policies and procedures. Some of these are physical settings. They are all inputs to our money-making machine, which is trying to do something for our <coughs> customer on the output side. Now, practical, world-class process control. This is dead simple now, folks. What they do is they decide on a standard for each one. So time and speed, I don't know, 20 seconds, temperature, 40 degrees C, pressure, three bar, hydraulic maintenance, I don't know, you go weekly, monthly, etc. Training, okay, not sure what the standard would be for training, but you'd have a you'd have a planned training course. You'd have certain jobs where trained people have to work, certain jobs where untrained people would work. You would have some rule about that. Material, most important, must have quality spec. Yeah, and this isn't about price. You can make anything cheap if you want to, but if it doesn't work, it isn't cheap, it's idiotic. Okay, so material, and the same with tooling. You would want to specify a quality. 
about the tooling as much as you'd want to specify a cost about the tooling. So they will specify the standards and then simply what they will do is they will put a policeman in charge, a control in charge of this and they will make sure that these standards are always adhered to. And these things can be very simple, things that you already know. They could be ISO audits. Focus, by the way, they're all focused on the inputs of the process. That's what true process control is about. They are all focused, so your ISO, your ISO audits are focused on the inputs of the process because the inputs to your processes make money. Why would you focus this on anything else? You want ISO 9000 to make money. They'll use FMEA to initially design these controls. Okay, FMEA, why'd you do FMEA? Well, you do it to make money. Why would you do, any other, do it for any other reason? What else will they do here? 5S, what will they use 5S for? Well, 5S audits, they'll be checking that these things are done. Plus the other thing that 5S does is it visualizes, it visualizes the standard. So for example, if the maintenance is not done on the machine, maybe a red flag appears on the top of the machine. It tells everybody you have an abnormality, this machine is not allowed to run. It is not allowed to make crap as far as the customer is concerned. So what have we got? We've got standards, then we've got systems to control those standards and to make sure they're adhered to. What are they? They're boring things like ISO audits, FMEA, 5S audits, visualization. Uh, what else? What else would be in there? Startup checks. Yeah, startup routines. What else? Management walkabouts. At the end of the day, if you visualize an abnormality, then the management regularly walk the floor. The role of the management is when they see an abnormality, they make sure that the abnormality is put right. They make sure that these standards, the, the senior management are the advocates of the rules and if the rules are broken they stop people and they make them go back to the standard they make them use the rule so you have inputs you decide where they should all be effectively what is the standard doing it simply fixes the input and if it fixes the input physics have to work here the laws of physics play into your process and if you fix the inputs you fix and another word for fix is you guarantee the output that is process control fixed input that guarantees the outputs using the, all the policing techniques ISO audits, FMEA, 5S audits startup checks, management walkabouts, whatever they happen to be. Um, can I think of any others? TPM. TPM is a great one for controlling the process, controlling the, uh, the quality of your machinery. TPM could be another controlling technique. Could just be planned maintenance routines. These things are all routines typically. And our firefighting, they're all things that just happen daily. Yeah, and we're not, we're not firefighting, we're not getting ourselves in a mess and then trying to dig ourselves out of it with, with great firefighting uh, techniques and uh, lots of efforts and uh, running around like crazy people. Um, what these are, they're all boring and they're all routine. And world-class companies get process control by identifying all the variables. FMEA does this. 
it identifies all the inputs to the process. They de divine, devise a standard. How am I going to control, fix that input? And then, how am I going to police that control? And if anything or anybody violates the control rule, they stop the machine and they put it right. And that is world-class, practical process control. Now, of course, you could put over here, you could put an SPC chart over here to help you see if you have an abnormality. That's fine. But the first thing you're going to do, the minute you get a problem, you're going to audit all of these controls. That's all. That's all process control is. That's all problem solving is. But if you haven't specified this, how can you problem solve? I've got to look at hundreds of inputs. I don't know where they're supposed to be. They were somewhere else yesterday. How will I possibly know what's caused the problem? Now, we have standards. We fix them. We adhere to the standards and the process works. We have an SPC chart that spots any abnormality. We use 5S to visualize abnormalities, to get control of the process. If we see an abnormality, we put it right and the process goes back in control. World class, practical process control. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book, Drink Tea and Read the Paper. It covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.